Can you handle horror films? No. I'm, no. I don't watch horror movies. I couldn't even tell you one. But it was great working with Robert Eggers. That film is gonna scare the shit out of you. It will scare the living shit out of you. Hey, it's Aaron Taylor Johnson. I'm here with Esquire in this insane castle in the middle of an island and Esquire has asked me to explain some things. So I'll try and do my best to explain some things. <laughs> Who can walk on their hands longer, you or Sam? I can. Me. To give Sam her credit. Sam's actually upside down more than I'm upside down, actually. In the mornings, I'll be dancing around the kitchen for the most part. We will have quite a bit of a morning dance off most mornings. Sam's most likely upside down up against a wall somewhere on her head. You'll have a good jump. Explain the vertical skill. I don't know, it comes from a sort of like a dance background, I guess, you know. There's a lot of s speculation on whether there's a trampoline or not, but there's not. There was a recent one, I'll tell you what, it's funny. I was in Prague. I thought I'd do a sort of series of, of jumps and I did my first one and I jumped really high, but nobody knows that when I landed, I literally tweaked my knee. <laughs> I tweaked my knee. I was like hobbling around. I couldn't jump and I was like, damn, I have like five more jumps I wanted to do. But everyone was like, I don't believe you jumped that. That's Photoshop. And I'm like, it's, it's not. How did it feel the first time you saw yourself in this campaign? Truth be told, I have four daughters, all of which just rips dad to pieces. So <laughs> my youngest daughter said that you look like a posh dancer who thinks they are like amazing, but really they're not. <laughs> you're never gonna be cool when you're just dad. You're in peak performance shape. What's your training regime look like? I'm actually really fortunate that I found an incredible trainer, David Kingsbury, who trained uh, Hugh Jackman for Wolverine. He trained me for this. I'd never been in such crazy shape. It was extreme. There was so much discipline behind it. You don't drink alcohol, you, you eat clean, you know, you, you're on such a different sort of regime. It's such a reset and it was, uh, it was great. And then I try and sort of stay in that kind of somewhere in there. What was the most surprising thing you learned working with Brad Pitt on Bullet Train? <laughs> it's a very funny photo of us. We had all sorts of ways of doing hearts. Do you know what was interesting on that tour? He had these beautiful cashmere shirts, God's Own Cashmere, which are, um, I found out that pretty much everybody had, but I didn't find that gift in my, uh, in my hotel. But uh, Joey King, she had a beautiful cashmere shirt, God's Own. What do you love most about farm life? That's everything to me, actually. There's nothing better than being kind of like back at home and out in the countryside. Kind of keeping busy outside of work is nice. You have like a hobby to be creative, to be kind of immersed in something. It started with like really enjoying cooking for the family. And then it was like, well, actually I want to know more about where those ingredients come from. And then it's like, well, you know, the, the fresher the better and more organic and then it was like well then I started gardening and then it was a vegetable garden and you start to get more involved with that and then it just got further and further out and now I have pigs I'm looking at getting a couple cows you know it's just stuff like that but it kind of keeps you busy and it's kind of like it's just a sort of a thing that's for you you know. Tom Ford personally shaved Aaron Taylor Johnson's Golden Globe winning mutton chops. Tom is so particular, he's got such an eye for detail and he knows exactly what he wants and that's kind of the beauty of Tom is that like there's structure and form and I think he just wanted to kind of craft the look and I was, I, I was so open to him just doing that because I like playing characters and I like when you, when you jump onto something and you get to start to shed yourself and then just start to sort of put together these other characters it's um it do not really matter how you kind of find it like you can start from the physical aspect all the way through to like the psychological aspects of your character but they sort of kind of merge at the same time how do you get into the mindset of a psychopath like anything you're doing your research aren't you and then you're just absorbing and soaking up and, uh, and you're being a sponge for all of that and then you you want to, you know, adopt some of those nuances and those uh, bad habits and things like that and then, and then sort of bring them out and play with them on set. So yeah, it was just a very toxic mindset you got to be in. If you had to have dinner with one of your characters, who would you choose and why? Uh, so I've got Craven the Hunter here, I've got Lieutenant Four from Godzilla, Isaac the Wolf, no, Ray Marcus, absolutely not, Friedrich Harding from Nosferatu, I just played. 
He'd be quite a laugh for dinner, actually. He'd be quite a laugh for dinner. What's the most surprising thing you learned about John Lennon while playing him in Nowhere Boy? What was kind of interesting about that story was the impact of what rock and roll and what Elvis sort of inhabited, like this effect on women. And I think in this story, we was kind of playing with the themes of these maternal figures around him. He was living with his aunt Mimi, but he sort of discovered his mother a bit late, but she was in the rock and roll. And then he saw Elvis and he saw this effect that he had on, on women. It was like, okay, I want that attention, but not from everybody else. All he wanted was the attention from you know that one person, his mother. What's a cheat day look like for you? Lots of pizza, man. Pizza and pasta. On the day of wrap at Craven, I had a pizza truck turn up and we all just munched on pizza. I was just, that's good. The character Craven is one of Spider-Man's notorious villains. He's quite a big dude. I remember looking at the, uh, the comic books and thinking, his arm's really big, but also, you know, it's his stomach as well, which is a bit of a contradiction, really, because if you want to put on some size, you've got to eat a lot, but you're not really going to end up with a washboard stomach. So that was quite tricky. But I did train really hard, spent, you know, a good six months training really hard to uh, put on size. So I had that kind of physicality for this character. Also, the action side of things is really agile. So, you know, I really wanted to show his movement, his technical sort of skill set is that he tracks and hunts down his prey. So, you know, that's really important. Costume was really interesting. I mean, it is something that um, inherently is a part of the character and the introduction to Craven in, 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 our, in this movie. So I think it's really interesting how Craven's connection to his iconic lion vest is in the comic books. So I think we want to stay true and integral to the comic books. And it was, you know, it's, it's really important to give the comic book fans what they've seen and grown up with and, and, and try and translate that to cinema. So that took some really, a lot of time and thought into how we would uh, get to that place. Oh, that was it. Thanks for watching. All right. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>